Hi, this is George from the Return of the King channel. Since my last video, I haven't been sitting around doing nothing. I've been doing a lot of studying and prepping for the season ahead. That season is about to begin. I'm going to release my next video a week or two after the Feast of Trumpets. It's about 90% complete. It will be most likely just over an hour in length. I have a few more things I still want to add in. I should have that completed within the next week or two. After that video is released, I plan on releasing videos as they are completed. You'll see a lot more videos released starting in late November, and I will be ramping things up over the winter heading towards the eclipse of April 2024. Next, I want to give a preview of what will be in the video to be released after the Feast of Trumpets. I'll talk about the three eclipses that form the Alpha and the Omega over America. There is now a comet that will appear during the eclipse of April 2024. It may be visible during the eclipse. Here's an artist's rendition of what that would look like. Here's the eclipse, here's the comet, and here's the planet Jupiter. Two days after the eclipse, the second dream I had about the moon in the constellation of Aries and the rapture is fulfilled. I'd asked the Lord if the moon in the constellation of the Lamb has anything to do with the rapture. That night I get a dream that symbolizes our wedding in heaven. A comet appears in the constellation of the Lamb between the moon and Jupiter. The ancient Jews believed comets were heavenly beings falling from heaven. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, morning star, son of the morning? Lucifer and his army are going to attempt to foil the rapture. The moon represents the Messiah and Jupiter the bride. And who's in between? Lucifer attempting to stop the groom from taking his bride home. In the story of the ten virgins, the ten virgins knew when the bridegroom was to arrive. In fact, they know he's late. He usually comes around sunset, but in this story, he doesn't arrive until midnight. When we put the two dreams together and everything else, this appears to be the day the groom comes for his bride. But the war with the dragon may delay the wedding to a later date. In Daniel 10, 12 and 13, we learn that from the time Daniel prays to the time the prayer is answered is 21 days. The angel sent to deliver the answer to his prayer is delayed because he must battle with the prince of Persia. So if this day should pass, we hope the war is short, we keep our lamps lit and wait, knowing that the dragon will be defeated. This is what the sky will look like at sunset, two days after the eclipse. This is a photograph I took of the comet that appeared in 2020. I've added the moon and Jupiter in the correct locations relative to the comet. So this is very close to what you would see that evening. This eclipse, the eclipse of October 14th, 2023, is telling us that the dragon is lying in wait. He's the one who has positioned a third of his army on the earth to attempt to stop the rapture. Mars represents the red dragon. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. She gave birth to a man-child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up, harpazoed, raptured to God and his throne. Mars, the dragon, is lying in wait for the rapture. I'll be going into detail on this dream to show you just how precise the dream is. I always wondered why I was running the race with a friend of mine who was a believer named Steve or Stephen. He didn't seem necessary to understand the dream. The name Stephen comes from the Greek word for a crown, the Stephanos. The 24 elders in the book of Revelation represent the Christian, and we are given crowns. The book of Revelation is written in Greek, and the crowns we are given are Stephanos crowns. In a future video, I'll go into more detail on the following dreams that are tied to the eclipse of April 8, 2024, the wedding in heaven, and then these four dreams which all occurred on a single night. My son has two dreams and I have two dreams. His first dream is more like a vision. 
he sees an 8 and then an 888. 8 is the day of the eclipse. 888 is the numerical value of the name of Jesus in Greek. He then has a dream of floating up. I'm in a safari style park and I see rapture soon signs everywhere. And then I have a dream of a war with symbols representing the war and the coming of the Antichrist. I've updated the chart to include the two dreams. When you're counting days, you have a two-day window depending on whether or not you include the last day in the date calculation. The day count now from the dream and Pentecost to the moon and Jupiter in Aries is 665 days, the day of the wedding. It does not include the last day in the calculation as it had in the previous video. On the 666th day, the 11th of April, the sign of the coming of the Antichrist appears. All date calculations on this chart are now identical. None of them include the end date in the calculations. Knowing the true day of Pentecost is important in the chart, as there are very precise day counts to the day of Pentecost and after the day of Pentecost. In the Book of Jubilees, the Feast of Weeks, also known as Pentecost, is always on the 15th day of the third month. Isaac is born on Pentecost. Judah is born on Pentecost. The covenant made with Abraham is made on Pentecost. Jacob and Laban make peace on Pentecost. The rainbow covenant that is made with Noah is on Pentecost. He set his bow in the cloud for a sign of the eternal covenant that there should not again be a flood on the earth to destroy it all the days of the earth. For this reason it is ordained and written on the heavenly tablets that they should celebrate the Feast of Weeks in this month once a year to renew the covenant every year. And this whole festival was celebrated in heaven from the day of creation. The second dream is fulfilled on the 665th day from Pentecost 2022. The following day, the sign in the heavens of the coming of the Antichrist appears. On the 666th day, in the constellation of Taurus, the moon representing Jesus the Messiah appears in the star cluster known as the Pleiades. In the book of Job, God asked Job if he can bind the chains of the Pleiades, also known as the seven stars, or loose the cords or the belt of Orion. Binding and loosening in the Bible has to do with imprisoning or releasing imprisoned spirits, fallen angels. Revelation chapter 9 is all about releasing demonic forces on the earth, including the four angels who are bound at the great river, the Euphrates. The constellation of Orion symbolizes the Antichrist. Deciphering the dream I was given involves a map of Egypt and a map of the heavens. In the book of Jasher, there is a detailed account of what happened to Joseph, far more detailed than what you find in the Bible. Joseph has his servant bring him a map of the stars. He is sitting with Benjamin and he ordered them to bring before him his map of the stars, whereby Joseph knew all the times. And Joseph said unto Benjamin, I have heard that the Hebrews are acquainted with all wisdom. Do you know anything of this? And Benjamin said, Thy servant is knowing also in all the wisdom which my father taught me. And Joseph said unto Benjamin, Look now at this instrument and understand where thy brother Joseph is in Egypt. You who said went down to Egypt. And Benjamin beheld that instrument with a map of the stars of heaven. And he was wise and looked therein to know where his brother was. And Benjamin divided the whole land of Egypt into four divisions. And he found that he who was sitting upon the throne before him was his brother Joseph. And Benjamin wondered greatly. And when Joseph saw that his brother Benjamin was so much astonished, he said unto Benjamin, what hast thou seen, and why art thou astonished? And Benjamin said unto Joseph, I can see by this that Joseph my brother sitteth here with me upon the throne. And Joseph said unto him, I am Joseph thy brother. Reveal not this thing unto thy brethren.
red dragons dwell in red seas. When we overlay the red dragon and the fishes on the map of Egypt and the Red Sea, the timing to what is most likely the final sign of the rapture of the church appears. The exodus is a type or foreshadowing of the rapture. The eclipse occurs in the gulf where Pharaoh and his army were drowned. The Israelites escape from the dragon, Pharaoh. Venus, the bright morning star, appears above the tail of the dragon and at the location of Mount Sinai. At the sound of the trumpet of God, Moses went up and God came down. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come. Venus, the bright morning star, is situated at Mount Sinai. At the rapture, the dead in Christ rise first, and then we who are alive meet the Lord in the air. After the rapture, Lucifer and his angels, who have been defeated in their attempt to prevent the rapture, are cast out of heaven to earth by God. The earth is left with the dark trinity of Lucifer, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. In the book The Unseen Realm by Dr. Michael Heiser, Mount Sinai is God's throne room on earth, as is the tabernacle and the temple. At the halfway point, the Antichrist, most likely possessed by Lucifer himself, will enter the temple of God and declare himself to be God. This is what I'll be covering in my next video and much, much more. That will be released sometime after the Feast of Trumpets. In parting, I want to leave you with a link to this song by Brookie Ligerwood. It just came out and the timing couldn't be more perfect. It's called The Fear of God. It's about our escape from Satan who roams around like a roaring lion. It's a perfect match for the video I'll soon be releasing. Here are a few lyrics from the song. In the blink of an eye and a trumpet sound, we will be changed by a supernatural power. God bless.